a battle for position. Possibly so. Bruce Jones is on the mark anyway with the Lamborghini. Yeah, well, I'm standing on the pit wall to get a high view of both. Vincent Voss has shifted everyone out of the deep WRT garage. I got all the deck chairs out of the way. It looks like a very standard pit stop. Mm. There is a slight mark on the R, oh, the, the 963 being wheeled round into the garage. Bit of side damage, but that's from earlier in the race. Taped up. Uh, still waiting for number four to make its way back, but they're, they're getting ready to receive the Belgian club, Team WRT. Uh, well, I'll let you know more in a moment when they get back. Zoeda is helmeted up, waiting to take over Ruben Mice when the pit stop does come to town. I'm going down to look at 963 now and see what they're doing. OK, thank you for that. Uh, do pipe up when you know a little bit more. But if we are looking for a green car that's had contact with the number four Audi, then it'll be left side that was damaged. Graham. It's a pit stop for the GT4 leading car, 31st position for the number 229 car. This is the Century Motorsport Gillette G55 GT4, and oil being added to the car at that stop. Uh, engine cover was taken off. Thank you, Graham. Uh, to Nick Newman, who has young Ben Green him who has raced Janettas for a good couple of seasons in the UK he often brings a big green double-decker bus with him you'll have to ask him whether that's here this weekend Nick starting with the most important question from my uh, colleague in the uh, booth do you have a big double-decker green bus with you not with us no it's uh, back home uh, my mechanic owns the bus and we used to race with it um, we used to follow us around the country when we raced in Super Cup last year so give us an idea, what was it like out there in the full dark and with the uh, various chaos going on? Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I went P1 yesterday in the GT4 class in the night practice, so I really enjoyed it. In the race, it was even better. There were loads of cars out there. And I just pushed from the dust from the start. I noticed you had some fluids added during that stop. Is that because there was a, a precaution or was there a warning light on? Uh, it was just a routine fuel stop, so nothing un, uh, untoward, so all went well and uh, looking forward to the next stint. So are you kind of just rotating one, two, three, four, or, or are they perhaps getting more night time because you like it? I think we'll rotate one, two, three, four, purely because all of us are good in the night and the day. We've got a very balanced team of good drivers and quick drivers. So I think we'll rotate it evenly to get the most sleep. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Green joining Nick Damon, and there's another. Oh, depends how you want to do it with the Lamborghini. I was just going to say that, that as that well. It's puncture. Um, I, I always think that punctures like that, um, when it's the only one that's had a puncture, might be bad luck. It might have run over something, but it might as well be something to do with the way they've set the camber up on the car uh, and just put a bit too much strain through the tyres. into the pit lane for the leading GT4 car and it's going into the garage the 229 Century Motorsport Ginetta. Three and a half hours to um, as I say 40 minutes of that is going to have to be down to Bronczewski. Uh, Hubert Haupt and Abdul Aziz Al Faisal will then have to take the car to the flag uh, for three and a half hours between the two of them. So um, that will mean that inevitably the Black Falcon number three car won't be quite as quick uh, in the remaining five and a half hours of this race or four hours of this race, uh, the last four hours of this race as it has been hitherto. The SP2 leader is at my feet, the 58 Mark VDS Adventures car. And uh, again, I know Joe Bradley's not here, but as uh, Nick Damon of the yard, uh, these are... It's not. It's mixed category racing, and I'm the first one that says the only way you can learn mixed category racing is by taking part in mixed category racing. And I think that Evo's idea of assessing some people to understand if they haven't raced here before, they must have raced in mixed category event with speed differentials. But there'd be an easy way to get rid of a lot of that speed differential, and that would be to take the GT3 cars out. Anyway, carry on. I think you had something for us, Nick. And Nick's Good morning, Joseph. Good morning, everyone up there. What a, you're right, it is a beautiful day. And I'm sure someone who's going to agree with me is Ben Green here, who's just gotten out of the 229 Century Motorsport Genetta. Ben, you're another convert from sprint racing. How are you finding your first endurance? I'm absolutely loving it. It's, uh, it's fantastic fun. It's a great team effort as well. Um, obviously, with all the teammates, the crew, managers, it's great fun. And obviously, you get to go around the world doing it as well. Absolutely. And do you find, Ben, there, there is an added responsibility to your teammates? For instance, in sprint racing, you don't change drivers. There's just no point in even attempting it. 
Um, do you find that brings its added responsibility to you, your or to your teammates to do a good job? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you have to sort of think about the team as a whole. Um, it's not individual drivers anymore. So you know, if you throw it off, it's going to hurt the team. It's going to hurt the team's chances. So you've really got to think about that when you're driving. And longer stints, how have you found them? I put in a lot of training recently. Um, and I've done three two-hour stints today, well, and last night. So, uh, yeah, I've found it good. Uh, lasted the full time, so I'm happy with that. When you say training, Ben, give us an idea. What do you mean? How do you train to be a racing driver? Well, it's a full-body sport. Most people don't realise that. So um, it's a, a sort of a mixture of cardio and uh, strength and conditioning. So, yeah, I normally, well, up to this race, I was training six days a week um, for about two months solid. So uh, it's been work to get from the sprint range to where I'm now. Right, and the rest of 2017, are you going to do any more endurance races? We're not sure yet. We haven't actually released our plans yet for 2017. But uh, I definitely enjoyed my first time, so I'm looking forward to it. That's how early it is we race here in uh, Dubai, isn't it? January. What are plans are finally? Best look for the rest of the day, Ben. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Joe Bradley down in.